five, six, seven, eight. Back clicks. <laughs> How's it going everybody? Welcome to another Tyler Teaches, where I teach you some of my favorite tricks and steps. Today we're going over one of my favorite tricks and one of those that's easily missed and can be a little on the inconsistent side. That being back clicks. But before diving into it, be sure to hit that like button if you enjoy these breakdowns. Liking the video really helps with the YouTube algorithm to get this video out to more dancers out there. So I'd really appreciate that along with subscribing to the channel to join this community of Irish dance YouTubers. We're slowly getting more Irish dance on YouTube and you're a huge part of that by continuing to support channels like this. So thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to support the channel further, I have a bunch of Kung Fu dance apparel over at Teespring, such as the shirt I'm wearing right now. All the proceeds go directly back into making the channel better, opening up more of my schedule so I can make more videos. Head on over there at teespring.com slash stores slash Tyler Schwartz dance shop. Also, these tunes you're listening to are provided by Fesh App. Whether you're a competitive dancer looking for practice tunes or just love Irish music like myself with hundreds of tracks in their catalog and more being added every week. Try it now over on the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. Now, the first thing I need to make super clear is that learning how to get consistent back clicks is a process. It'll take time and that time may vary from dancer to dancer. This is a trick that requires a few layers of understanding and you really can't skip or fast forward through any of those layers. It's a trick that requires quality along with a hefty dose of quantity, AKA practice. So when we think about back clicks, we think about the actual heel click, but also the height and spin that's involved. Now it doesn't make sense to work on the height and spin before being able to hit the heels on a consistent level. So we're gonna talk about that and how to achieve that on a consistent basis first. We've talked about heel click consistency before in a previous video. Today, we're just dialing in on the back click, but those same principles still apply. We gotta have my big three things in order to stay consistent with heel clicks. That being turned out feet, pointed toes, and crossover from the hips. If one of those three is lacking, you'll be missing more clicks than you'll be hitting. Or if you find yourself missing a bunch of clicks, normally one of those three isn't happening from one or both of your feet. So to practice back clicks, we first want to practice our two-footed switching click jumps from right foot in front to left and so on and so on. Practice them to a reel with a straight jump in between each switch. You should be able to get one jump switch click each bar for eight bars. Here's an example of this to music. Remember to focus in on keeping the feet turned out throughout the exercise. Point the toes as you leave the floor and not to have too much space between your knees as you're passing. I would also highly recommend not to go any further until you're able to go eight for eight on this. You can't run before you walk. We need to be consistent in easier heel clicks before moving on to the tougher ones. The next exercise actually has us doing heel clicks out in front of us. Heel clicks get more difficult as they get further away from directly underneath us. Personally, I'd also add that heel clicks in front of us are a little easier than behind us. When we bring our legs out in front of us, we still normally have the tendencies to continue pointing our toes, keeping the turnout and the crossover. That all gets a little more difficult to remember when it's behind us. But having consistent heel clicks in front of us is the next level towards fully understanding back clicks. So I would call this next exercise front click step-ins. 
or quick set pins. Right foot in front of left, on eight, two, three, we're gonna pick up our turned out right leg, jump off our left leg, click our heels in front, and then land on our right foot. This then leading into a step in led by our left foot. As soon as you step in with the right leg, you then repeat the movement with your left foot in front. Repeat this process for eight bars. It can be done in spot or moving depending on the space you have. I'd keep the kicks low at first in order to keep the, with the timing. It also gets more difficult to stay consistent the higher up you kick. Here's an example of this to music. Remember that the big three is still important. Remember to keep those toes pointed, turned out, and cross over. If you're still missing a few, record yourself doing this exercise and look for those big three, or dial back to the first exercise. In the same way we did the previous exercise, you want to be able to consistently hit all eight heel clicks in one run before moving on. If you can't be consistent with the clicks in front of you, you definitely won't be able to be consistent behind you. All right, we've managed to get consistent heel clicks underneath us and in front of us. Now it's time to start working on the heel clicks behind us. This exercise is going to be pretty similar to the one we just did on our 8-2-3. We're going to pick up our back leg. We're only going to bring it just off the ground for now. We then trade feet in back while keeping the toe curl, turn out and cross over. When all this is at play, the heels have a tendency to just run into each other. After that trade, Bring your new back foot down, followed by the new front foot. Here's an example of that to music. This exercise may seem pretty simple, but I can attest to its effectiveness. It's the exact drill I did years ago to get my heels consistent. When I missed my back clicks, my teacher would send me to the back of the hall to practice my back clicks over and over again. This was the only exercise I did, and I must have done thousands of them back then, over and over, but over time I started to get much more consistent with the movement and the awareness of where my heels were. I then started bringing the click higher and higher up and back until I could get my heel click all the way to the top of my backside. As you continue practicing this exercise, once you start getting consistent with the heel clicks, start picking your legs up a little more and more each time. This extra swing behind might also help you get a little more hang time in back. Keeping the exercise simple helps dial into the specific trick and focus on nothing else. Now, we haven't talked about the spin people like to toss into their back clicks. I'd say the first thing to practice before going into full spins is to actually put a little quarter turn into the back click exercise we already have. Heel clicks also get a little uh, more inconsistent when you throw in spins or things that can potentially put you off balance. So start off with just a quarter turn and gradually work your way to a half turn. The final exercise for putting these back clicks on the move also adds a bit of a follow through to it. This time in our 8-2-3, we're gonna jump off into a step in, switch step, and pop our back foot in front and jump into a back click. We then follow through with that left foot and kick our backside with the right foot and then lead back out with the right foot and repeat the entire combination again. You'll be able to do the combination four times in one set of eight bars all on the left foot. So definitely don't forget to also practice it on the right foot. Once you've got the balance of the back click on the move, add in the spin by turning over your left shoulder on the left back clicks and right shoulder on the right back clicks. Whoa. Again,
again, back clicks take time to master and won't be something mastered overnight. It's something you have to have patience with and put in the time and work required. Quality and quantity. If you're still having trouble with back clicks, dial back to the previous exercises and work your way back to the back clicks. It's definitely a process, but possible. Anyone can get it if you're willing to put in the proper time. So I think that's a great place to wrap it up for today. I hope this helped give some insight into back clicks. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button. These videos take a good amount of time with setting up the scripts, videoing, and editing. So hitting that like button really does help motivate me to continue making more of these videos for all of you beautiful people out there. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe for more awesome videos like this and hit the bell for notifications so you'll be notified when the next one comes out. Comment down below which trick or dance you'd like broken down next. But for now, I will see you next time. Hey.